I'm Lorraine, I'm 30 years old and I'm from Dublin. Before I tell you my story of when I was discriminated against, I want to give you a bit of my background. To give you a bit of my background, I have to start from the beginning. From the age of 14, I started taking drugs because of a trauma in my life. As the years went on, it led to harder drugs. I always had a support of family, even though I felt I had let them down. I always felt I wasn't worthy of anything in life. Five years ago, I hit rock bottom and decided to change my life around. I went into a recovery home and turned my life around for the better. I had one or two slips, so I went on to a methadone clinic to make sure I stayed on track and I never looked back since. Then I met a guy down at a Christian event down the country. He soon became my husband and he accepted me for my past. I never had anybody love me the way that he does. I fell pregnant with her little girl, Heidi, but what was supposed to be the happiest time of my life was in fact a nightmare. I'll never forget the day, just hours after giving birth, when a social worker came to me bed and introduced herself. I grabbed my daughter up off the bed and held her so tight to my chest, because unfortunately, when we hear the word social worker, we automatically think they're coming to take our children away from us. I wanted to run out the door with me baby, but because of my past and being on a methadone clinic, which I thought was the right thing to do, she wanted to make sure my home was safe and suitable for my child. She called out to my mother's home, where I was living at the time, and saying that it was more than okay, and she closed the case. But I just want to ask you this. Do you think that was the right way to go with a new mother just hours after giving birth? I'll never forget it. I had nightmares for weeks that my child was being taken off me. Even in the hospital, I felt I was treated different because I was on methadone. I would watch the nurses chatting and joking with the other mothers and I was left in the corner. They would go over and help the mothers with their babies, even take them for an hour so the mothers could rest, while I was left to figure everything out by myself. A new mother, remind you. We got pregnant on my second daughter, Daisy May, and I swore I'd never let that happen again. She's now six months old, and my daughter Heidi is two and a half. Today we've recently got our own house for me babies. You see, even though I was discriminated against and judged for me past, I never let that stop me better in me future. But I'll never stop fighting. I'll never stop fighting for my kids' future. I hope my children are never discriminated against the way I was. The lack of equal opportunities must end so that my children don't suffer the hardships in life that I did or anyone's children at that. I will continue to lay down the footsteps so my children can follow in them because the next generation I believe are the ones that's going to change this country. So support them in whatever it is that they want to do in life. Because it's their dreams and it's their future, not ours. But never stop fighting for it. Thank you. I think when we look at life today, being on, when people are on the street, I find that they're discriminated by the way they dress, the way they look, and how they have to beg for money for hostage. In this country, I think that people have discriminated you by not having a roof over their head and how they have to go out. If they do have a roof, go out and beg for money just to get a roof over their head. And if they were to go out and had a roof over their head, they would actually have to get 
shopping off with a new girl or whatever because they're not able to board. This country needs to put a budget to each of them as soon as income, how they're not in poverty. Poverty is a mean of, of where discrimination is being held. People are judged, laughed at, shame, and embarrassing people. Thank you, Jimmy. I feel discriminated because both of us have mental health problems and we can't live together as a married couple. We have had many meetings about housing and all we've been told is there's no couple's accommodation. And because of COVID-19, things have been extra difficult trying to spend time together. And that has put, finance, uh, put us in financial difficulties. Hi everyone. Um, I wrote this poem. Um, it's um, it's um, it's a part of um, the IHREC, um, how they work and what the government is doing and the lack of everything. Um, so it's all in different parts. So I'll just read it out to you. Um, As I know that you hold a mandate on human rights and equality. I think it's time we join and try to eradicate poverty. These fall under housing, education, employment and health. I think we should start by spreading the wealth. To people in need, the poor and the homeless. Let's start by spreading hope to the hopeless. The lack of support, it truly offends me. When you're looking for votes, it's the only time you preach equality. Empty promises. I'm sick of it all. It's up to you, just make the call. The call to build houses, I mean you are the government. Why can't you stop this destru destruction? Just make the call to start construction. Construction of fairness, equality and the United Ireland, Island. I mean you are in charge of Ireland. Just follow through on what you said. Instead of waking up and another is dead. Dead from the cold, cardboard box that's all that keeps them warm. If ye said yes, there would be no harm. That's why there's groups like ATD, because we stand against poverty. That's why we stand for equality. It's time to stop all this negativity that the government is spreading. I mean, look at where we're heading. When people look at homeless, homelessness as the normality, it's when I look on ye in pity. When you walk down Dublin and see people asleep on the ground, I don't know how you sleep so well and sound. Please listen to us, there is people dying. Families are nearly drowning from the tears they are crying. They're crying to ye to help them out. Some are afraid to scream and shout. I hope this poem reaches someone's heart before this country just falls apart.